get the mics hot. We are, uh, I believe everybody can hear us now, and we are, whoop, I'm not dressed. Whoops, we are live for the 63rd running of the Old Humble Distilling Company Quarantine Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, thank you all for joining us. I have here on my, well, my right, uh, the talented and amazingly funny Alyssa Kapinski. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Said hi, everybody, and she just says that. That's fine. Oh, That's fine. Everybody. I'm sorry. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My goodness. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Uh, Got to keep you on your toes. Uh, so you are uh, you are an actress. You're based in New York City. Uh, you've got uh, several credits to your name. Uh, the not, I mean, it's not the most recent one. Uh, you've got, but uh, of course, over your shoulder there, the Velocipaster. Uh, but also high fidelity and. Uh, third one that I am that's evading my my uh, evading me right now. I can't remember what it is. Hmm. How, about, how about you tell people what you got? A random show called FBI, which is like in the Dick Wolf world. There you go. I played a prostitute, and then uh, the other one was a uh, show called The Deuce with Maggie Gyllenhaal, the, and I also played a prostitute. The Deuce, that's what I was thinking of. You're, so, are they trying to typecast you there? Because in the Velocipaster, you were also typecasted. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, I think what's important for me is um, having a, a well-rounded prostitute, not just being the woman who shows up and gets thrown off as that thing. Someone like Carol, you know? The the doctor lawyer. Yeah. She's do she has to work her, her her business as a prostitute in order to get her priorities straight. Everyone's gotta pay their bills. Yeah. She wants to be a doctor lawyer. Doctor lawyer, exactly. You've got a and not a not a not a doctor lawyer, a lawyer for just doctors. She wants to be a doctor who act, who who doctors and also a lawyer. Like yep. dual profession because yes. there's all the all the time in the world to do both of those things. That makes perfect sense. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. So, so at the beginning of the shows, I like to pour myself a cocktail. I am having uh, today our straight, our special reserve, uh, special reserve neat. Uh, and I would also like to give a big th thank you over to the Cabin Fever live stream network on Twitch who, for hosting us. Uh, everybody on Twitter who is watching and everybody here on YouTube watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, subscribe to the channel down here. Uh, like the video. If we get 100 likes on this video, we will give away a free bottle of whiskey. So uh, make that happen, people. Do it. Um, it's good stuff. I had some yesterday night. Thank you. And I see, I didn't even, uh, I, I just invited her on the show. I didn't even pay her any money for that. That's awesome. Isn't that true? <laughs> but cheers, Alyssa. Is that is that tea or is that uh, the delicious elixir this that I is sent you? Tea. I, I was saying before, I have an audition after this <laughs> that I've got to record in my living room. And so it's tea for me. So, yeah. So let's jump right into that. So in the world of the pandemic, the the, the post-apocalyptic world that we live in, or I guess the cur concurrent apocalyptic, yes. it would be the apocalyptic world that we live in right now. Neither pre nor post. Uh, currently in. Uh, I mean, the city is mostly shut down. Uh, I mean, I mean so you can't be going to auditions and doing things in big public crowded areas. Uh, so how is the acting world? Uh, uh, was it completely shut down for nine, nine months? Just nothing new coming out or was it very limited uh, bubble stuff going on? So I think it's been very, I mean, I think a lot of people who are in New York think New York is, a lot quieter than it is, but my my blocks and, and, and my neighborhood is as vibrant as ever. People are just having their cocktails on the street instead of inside the restaurant. So maybe there's just not enough, like, but anyway, um, the, the it, it felt like it shut down for a little bit for me personally, but I have a lot of friends who were auditioning pretty feverishly that whole time. Mm -hmm. Um, and by feverishly, you mean at a rapid let, pace, not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting a lot of. of I not, know sometimes not Corona I feverishly. Great words, words at all. <laughs> I make up words. I get yelled at for making up words. All words are um, made up. Go for it. Make up good ones. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a big fan um, of made up yeah, words. Let's do it. Up, it just started picking up a little bit for me. Mm -hmm. Um. 
which which for me personally is always kind of the situation sometimes i have dead spots and then like it rains and it pours and it's mm -hmm. all happening at the same time um but i think right now the industry as it stands is starting to come up again um open up because we're starting to get new precautions in order and like get that structure yeah so people feel safe filming and that makes sense uh, as the protocols assuming everybody follows the protocols you can I mean, you can you can manage the the exposure and manage the outbreak uh, or the risk of outbreak by following specific protocols. We know what the protocols are. Yeah. And those of us who believe in the protocols, we know what they are. We know how to stay safe. You can go to stores. You wear your mask. You wash your hands. Uh, avoid licking doorknobs as a general rule, uh, but specifically in this time and age. Uh, don't eat after other people. Don't go into the restaurant, pick up a spoon and just lick it. That's gross. Uh, that's, that's probably a good rule to maintain anyway, just in general. I would agree for that. Yeah. <laughs> but specifically in quarantine land, uh, <laughs> just plopping down at somebody's table and taking a sip of their drink and then walking off. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we should probably avoid doing that. Uh, so, yeah. so, but I guess around March of this year when everything just kind of went uh, belly up for us in particular down here, I felt like we were, we were at the distillery. We were in the process of getting some momentum for the year, kind of getting, getting things in order, getting a big push to go into the, the spring and summer uh, doing a lot of sales events, doing a lot of shows. There's a lot of shows that happen, especially down here in Texas uh, sure. as we move through the spring and go into the summertime. A uh, bunch of public events, bunch of public shows, and then everything just kind of shut down. The brakes were on, and and the train just uh, uh, froze, and we had to swiftly change gears. How was it for you? Were you did you feel like you had this uh, uh, head of steam, this momentum coming, and then everything just had to stop? And did did you have to uh, did you lose auditions? Did did events stop? Or what was up? So I think I mean. My experience being here in New York and so many other people's experiences being here is very different. For me, personally, I had an, an immense amount of anxiety. I was just terrified, you know, of everything going on, especially because we were the hardest hit in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so I just remember feeling like two weeks, we have to quarantine two weeks. I can't afford to take two weeks <laughs> off, you know? You know, that whole like idea in my mind. And then how, it's just amazing to look back and think, wow, like we never knew how we could even function through this. And, and here we are six months, seven months living mm. in this situation. But um, I actually left the city. I was feeling a little um, anxious. And so I left for two months. Um, I stayed with my parents for a month and they drove me properly insane with much <laughs> love, but needed to leave. And then I went uh, cross country with my partner to his family home in Arizona. So I actually was in Texas for a little bit. I drove, drove through. <laughs> right through that, uh, the, probably through the panhandle area, right? Uh, is that the, yes. Amarillo, Lubbock area up there. Yes. on the Amarillo. Yep. I went through Amarillo. Absolutely. A lot go. of fields, a lot of cows. Yeah, there is indeed. And uh, I, I hate to say it, but I don't know how you feel about coffee, but coffee on the road, driving, uh, through the country, you order, order coffee and they just assume you want milk and sugar in it. Oh yeah. You have to definitely tell them black. Like, that is insane. I know it's nuts and it doesn't make any sense because if I want coffee with milk in it, I'll say coffee with cream and sugar. Thanks. Yes. I mean, nobody, oh my no I other food that. is like that. No other food is like that where you say, give me, uh, I mean, you know, burgers in some cases on the menu, they clearly have like this burger comes with ketchup, but you have to normally tell them I want a burger, ketchup and mayonnaise or a burger with cheese. They don't just assume you want crap on your burger. Ugh. But yeah, yes, yes, there are exactly. places, and it and so it drives me nuts. Part. I like my coffee, um, and and it doesn't have to have the cream in it if it's good coffee. <laughs> I mean, I like I'm I like coffee always. I'll have it black. I'll have it with cream mm -hmm. sugar. I'm notoriously known for having like some embarrassing amount of those like stupid creamers. Mm -hmm. 
like I have Oreo in my fridge right now. Like someone Ooh. should show me. That's horrible. But interesting. Um, yeah, it's good. I like the Oreo one. Yeah. But we learned going cross country that you have to say exactly how you want the coffee. Otherwise you're going to get it very sweet. Mm-hmm. And very light. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, and also with, if you uh, drink tea, there are places across the South, especially in Southern States of the United States, uh, that tea is just assumed to be sweet. And I am not familiar with that either, because even though my family is Southern, I drink my tea either hot or just regular tea. Um, I don't normally sweeten my tea either, <laughs> which makes me a weird person in Texas. They they want their uh, sweet tea and oh, all yeah. that stuff. That's um, the thing, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just an I'm just an odd bird, I, I suppose. I like my my whiskey neat, my tea strong, and my coffee black, and that's it. Speaking of coffee, um, we are developing a coffee liqueur. If you are a fan of coffee liqueurs, if you like coffee and whiskey, oh wow, I got a thing for you. That would that sounds amazing. Yeah. So next time I'm up, either next time you're in Texas or next time I'm up in uh, New York, which hopefully will be very soon before the end of the year, I'll be up there. Um, uh, I'll bring you a bottle of the stuff we're working on. Sounds amazing. It'll be it'll be delicious. Does it taste like? If if you appreciate black coffee, then I feel like you might understand how a coffee liqueur I think should mm-hmm. taste, which is like the coffee has to be the most important part. Yes, yes. And then the sweetness comes, but the coffee—it's got to be about the coffee. Mm-hmm. And my coffee liqueur is a lightly sweetened, cold brew okay. coffee infused whiskey. That sounds. And and we had to put a little bit of sugar in there. We had to give it a little bit of sweet because the sure. coffee and the whiskey were kind of. Uh, it was kind of conflicting with each other uh, in the in the flavor profile, so we had to put a little bit of something in there to kind of blend the two together. But I didn't want it to be too much because I didn't want it to taste like Kahlua, yes, which, which is really, 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 really sweet. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's one of the things that we're working on, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be delicious. It's going to be nutritious, and it will keep you up and also relax you at the same time. <laughs> I look forward to trying it. I look forward to sharing it. Um, <laughs> Let me move my screen one more time there. There we go. Uh, you're slowly migrating. <laughs> oh, this way? Yeah. Am I? You're fine. You're fine. I got you back in the middle. You're good. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's talk. Let's let's go ahead and let's talk about Velocipaster. It was a great movie. I loved it. It it was uh, uh, appropriately campy and appropriately serious. Uh, the thing the, the the scene that hooked me in the movie was when the uh, 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 the pastor's parents got, their car got blown up. <laughs> and it was just the freeze frame of insert VFX here or whatever it was. That that was the scene that hooked me in the movie. Uh, and I, I, I was watching it like, okay, this is for real. This is good. We're, we're in. <laughs> How much fun was it making that movie? I remember actually joking with friends and when I was making this, they're like, what's your, like, you know, people always ask you that kind of question. Like, mm-hmm. what's your ideal career look like? Mm-hmm. And I was like, if I can make movies like the Velocipaster over and over and over again, I'd be thrilled. Because we were all so dedicated to this idea and to making it as ridiculous as possible. Mm-hmm. And sure, like, the fact was we had, we had, we had enough money to make a movie for, for, we were kids, you know? Sure. But when you look at the the scheme of things and and how far we've able to reach been able to reach without the money that we uh without money Mm -hmm. um we realized like we just kind of leaned in you know like most of those props were the same props used over and over again there's one arm with a tattoo there's one mannequin head and it's just the the same (laughs) over and over again and so actually the the vfx thing was a happy accident Mm -hmm. I think Brendan put that in for a VFX that he was going to put in mm-hmm. or like a special effects. And it was going to be like blowing up like a toy car or something. It was going to be something stupid, but everyone loved the fact that it was just nothing. And so he was like, you know what? I'm going to lean in. And he just used it. But I'll tell you, I had, uh, my, my, my brothers lives in Philadelphia. And so I went to the Philadelphia premiere with him mm-hmm. And they, the film festival calls me and they're like, 
hey, so I'm not sure if we actually have the right copy of the film. We were running a little bit of it. And I was like, oh, is it the VFX moment? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, no, you have the right one. <laughs> That's so awesome. That is, that is so absolutely fantastic. Uh, so it was recorded back in, or filmed back in 2017, right? Yeah, before released- that, we, we released in 2017. I thought it was released in 2018. So I have my timeline wrong. So like 2016-ish was when it was, when yeah, it was recorded? Yeah, if you might have your time, I might also have my uh, timeline. I might, the the, fact, the facts in my head get all jumbled up with all kinds of different stuff. Uh, between Romanian gymnasts and whiskey facts and uh, general geography. Yeah, my, my, my facts are all over the map. <laughs> you, you are correct, though. I believe that we um, wrapped production and started premiering around 2017, 2018. And I think that we filmed 2016, but I could be completely wrong. I don't remember. I got you. Uh, and I'm, I'm, yeah, it gets released. I suppose it was released in limited, uh, uh, limited venues, film, film festivals and things like that around the country. And then it, mm-hmm. it pops up on Amazon prime, I guess a year or so ago. I have that about right. Yeah, so, well, the revolution of it, actually, the first, so we've, we've had these moments over and over again, mm-hmm. where we just get, like, surges of, it just catches um, fire. yeah, of attention, mm-hmm. so much so that, like, I'll receive a bunch of, on my Instagram, because that's, like, my main social media, Sure. I'll receive, like, a bunch of um, follows on my Instagram, and then, like, comments in, like, Portuguese, <laughs> and I'm, like, Brendan, what happened? Like, why are we blowing up in Brazil right now? Like this happens randomly. Like I actually don't know what the language is, but it happened again, like two days ago, but I don't know what language these people are commenting in. So thank you for the support, but I don't know where you're coming from. That's hilarious. Um, But we, I think we released, so like we had a press agent and, um, they released the the press release mm-hmm. the same week as the Avengers was coming out. Oh my! And no pressure, no 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 competition. Yeah. No competition, no pressure. <laughs> I mean, we made thirty thousand dollars. Like in in the film world, that's that's scratch. That's nothing. That was the budget thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars. Wow. Um, and we all got paid. Like. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we just didn't have any money to make the movie. Oh, right. So um, we got released around, we, our press release got released around the same time as The <laughs> Avengers came out. And that was somehow Hollywood Reporter picked us up and a bunch of other random media outlets picked us up and started writing about us. <laughs> and we just, it was a fluke. The whole thing was a fluke. And then people loved the movie. Yeah. Or hated it, but I think that most people who understand that we are just trying to make spread some silly joy. I mean, it love was, it. It was clearly fun to be made. It was a fun movie to watch. It was a fun movie to be made. Uh, I, I don't think anybody would mistake it for the Avengers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, big yeah. giant two hundred million dollar Hollywood blockbuster movie. Uh, I mean, it was for I mean, y'all. Y'all seriously, y'all need to go watch this movie. It's uh, three dollars to rent it on Amazon. Eight dollars to buy it. Go, go watch the damn movie. It's hilarious. It's fun to watch. Uh, the 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 main character Pat, the pastor, goes over to, uh, uh, he, he he's in Vietnam, or one of the one of the pastors is in Vietnam. And it's clearly the same forest. Yeah, but the, he initially was in China. Right. The the Chinese forest, the Vietnamese forest, and the forest in New York are or I guess it's not New York. Uh, where's it based at? Uh, so we or is it just generic city? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know where it's based. Right, I, I assumed it was New York, but like the forest is all the same. All three of the those forests. Yeah, we shot that <laughs> in Pennsylvania around okay. like the Poconos area. Mm-hmm. Um, at our director's <laughs> back, backyard and his friends' assorted backyards. That was mm-hmm. where we shot all of those, and we just wrote. <laughs> He just, when he made the film, just like labeled it China. Right. Like no one was, we didn't go to China. Yeah, clearly. Obviously, you, you it was clearly the same jungle. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
we did shoot a little tiny bit of it in um, New York City, some little bits and pieces, because most of us at the time were based in New York City. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but for the most part, it was Jersey and Pennsylvania that okay. we shot everything. See, I, I figured it was in the uh, the wooded section of Central Park. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, you just had an afternoon and you went and spent in the wood. In that area. <laughs> I actually have a funny story. One time my parents and I were, um, they came to visit me for the weekend and we were walking around in Central Park and I was like, look, it's so amazing. It's like hiking. And anyway, then we walked by a, a couple engaging in fellatio in oh, the nice. middle of the park. Nice. And I was like, with my parents. And I was like, oh, <laughs> eating my words. <laughs> nice just, day in the park. It's just so pleasant. It's natural. and fun. Oh, look. <laughs> oh yes uh, young love in the air that's just how it goes uh, they're, they're doing a sequel that was announced earlier this year wasn't it yeah Yeah. we, I, we announced a sequel um, <laughs> of our uh, hopeful trilogy they announced the sequel so they haven't uh, I said they were doing a sequel you smiled nodded and said yes they've announced a sequel are those oh. two different things <laughs> I have no doubt about okay. our doing a sequel. I, the sequel will happen. Okay, good, I good, guess, good. I guess, I guess my um, hesitancy comes from just the state of filming right now. Mm -hmm. We With COVID and everything going on, we just don't know when we'll be able to function it normally. Could, and it could be in five we, years. <laughs> yeah, we just don't know when it's going to happen. But don't worry, we yeah. will give you a sequel. The Velocipaster 2, Incredibles 2, because uh, <laughs> it'll be 10 years. Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> what was another one that would, they did big separation like that? Uh, they, they did a Blues Brothers uh, story? that was 25 years separated. Uh, Blues Brothers 2000 and the original, I guess it wasn't 25, it was about 2000. Um, wow. And what was the other? There was another one that was a big wide separation uh, between the first one. Well, I, I, the Star Wars trilogy, they did a oh, big fat yeah, separation true. between the third one and the first one. Yeah. Or the fourth one. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, wait, hold on. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I love my nerd culture people. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, a, what, what other, what other, uh, there's another one that I'm thinking of and I can't remember. It was a big wide gulf between the two. Um. Uh, uh, it'll come to me probably in an hour or so. No, I just think of like, because they make so many like remakes of things now. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to know like what is, what like, I don't know what the right word is, oh. continuous in the series. Gotcha. Or just like a remake of something. Yeah, versus a reboot on the timeline, like the Star Wars or yeah. Star Trek, where they've, uh, are they even, are they even doing those anymore? I thought I read something that said Universal wasn't going to do any more Star Trek movies. I don't know. Oh, don't. I'm not to the Star Trek. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not particularly plugged into those either. So, uh, Velocipaster definitely ended with the the notion that uh, our Velocipaster could go all across the world, go to Europe, and uh, uh, continue his reptilian vigilantism. Uh, yes. <laughs> is is that kind of the, do you have any idea what the next two chapters in the Velocipaster trilogy? <laughs> yes, I it just, absolutely. It just sounds silly saying it out loud. The Velocipaster trilogy will be. I or would could. It be a trinity since he's a pastor. Trilogy. Okay. Yes. Oh, uh, um, <laughs> so I know everything. Okay. I just can't tell you any of it. That's fair. That's, <laughs> that's perfectly fair. You heard it here first, people. Exclusive information about Velocipastor Trinity that, that she can't tell us. So there you go. Anything. I it can exists. Tell you, I can tell you that, so if you haven't, um, our, our second film is our spiritual sequel. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to be um, seeing a whole new cast of characters. Okay. Um, but I assure you, um, you'll get your fan favorites. Nice. I'll, I'll be there. Nice. I nice. don't know how long I'll be there for, but I'll be there. That is cool. That is fantastic. That is exciting. I was um, thinking that I was 
fan fave. Yeah. You know, yeah. Greg will be there too. Naturally. Um, well, we, we obviously we're going to have to have the Velocipastor himself unless he's passing on the claw. Was it a claw or a tooth? It was a claw, wasn't it? What, it, what, the, what was what, the, what the cursed? Was it a cursed tooth or a cursed claw? I was oh, never, I wasn't actually, quite. Yeah, I wasn't quite clear on that in the. Uh, uh, I have no idea. I always thought it was a tooth, but now that you mention it, now it might have been a claw. <laughs> I'm serious. I always thought it was a tooth. I have no idea. I wasn't. I wasn't. I I, I watched it several times, obviously, because I'm a dork. But uh, I couldn't. I, I just couldn't quite confirm. Uh, I mean, it's big and it's hooked. It looked. I mean, it could easily be either one. Either. Um, I was under the impression that it was a tooth, and honestly, like, as long as you know that it's just not a rock or something. Oh, right, exactly. It's definitely something from a velociraptor, some kind of fossilized something that's cursed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. for y'all who, all three of you who didn't watch it, it's a guy who's on his his parents get blown up, and he goes to find himself, and he's in the woods in China. And he picks up, he, he runs into some lady with a cursed claw or a cursed tooth that cuts him and he turns into a uh, velociraptor when he gets, I guess it's at night. It's not when he gets angry. It's just at night. And he turns into um, a, a velociraptor, right? That's pretty much it. I actually, I don't know. I'm not sure if I, if I'm the person to ask in regards <laughs> to like the rules of him becoming a velociraptor. I think the rules are clearly loose. They're just. Kind of in general. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then he decides to use his power for good uh, and breaks up a... I gotta say, the the evil plot was ingenious. Uh, the way it was constructed. Of, it kills me every time. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the for elucidation for those who haven't seen it yet, because y'all really need to see this, and I don't think I've given away... Uh, the, the great sweeps of the the uh, big twist at the end, but it's uh, <laughs> it's a a an organization that is pushing highly addictive cocaine in order to drive people to uh, rehabilitation programs at the church. Yep. To help the church grow, which yep. makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and. and I mean, hilarity ensues. It's <laughs> it's it's just fantastic. And um, the way it gets constructed, uh, and there's ninjas. Yep. So ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> Jesuit ninjas. Nice. That I mean that. I don't know where he comes up with that stuff. But that's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so cheers to Brandon there. Cheers. Who, by the way, also invitation on the show anytime he wants to come on. We can talk about all of his other projects. I'll let him know. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> he texted me today. He sent me a uh, video of a baby fox Aww. getting rescued. Because we a, a large part of our relationship is talking about baby animals. Okay. Yeah. I have a, I have a um, two-month-old kitten. Cute. So... We talk about him a lot. Yeah. Well, I was actually asleep. Just asleep. before this, I was hanging out with my cat, who is not a two month old kitten anymore. He's probably, God, he's probably 10 years old. He's an old oh cat. Oh my gosh. But I've got, I got, what I have a mean? blanket that is a faux fur blanket that I, it, it looks like uh, the capes that they wear in, on the Night's Watch in uh, yeah. uh, Game of Thrones. It's Game a big, a big furry blanket thing. Amazing. Uh, and I love it. It's warm. It's toasty. My family's not allowed to use it. Uh, but when it's, <laughs> lay, when it's laying on the bed, the cat just kind of curls into it and snuggles down into it. He's the yeah. cutest. He's just the cutest my, little kid. And we got him, we got him uh, as a foster initially, but they found him on the street. Mm -hmm. And um, he was so little that he would, he would suckle on the blankets and the stuffed animals around the house because he didn't have a mom. Aw. So sad, but so cute. <laughs> That's very cute. That is adorable. Uh, yeah. I, I like my kitty and my puppy too. Um, yeah, that's a better screen. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you go to movies, what movies do you go to watch? I mean, obviously you're not going to movies lately because uh, the city's shut yeah. down. And big giant crowds inside giant rooms is a dumb thing. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah. what movies do you go see when you go see movies? I love indie movies. So documentaries also. I'm a big documentary nerd. Oh, I, thought, I thought you meant like uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, Temple of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, <laughs> that's funny. Just um, kidding. Anyway, like, uh, I watch a documentary. Basically, like a, a a beautiful day in New York for me, pre COVID, mm -hmm. would be to catch a double feature at the Independent Film Center or IFC. Okay. On West Fourth Street in the Village, it's um, <laughs> my favorite time of year is when the Oscar shorts come out. Oh, cool! Yeah. You can watch, I'll watch the documentary shorts and then I go get to see the animated shorts. Nice. Okay. So what was the last movie you saw? Which um, was, I guess, back in February or March. Oh God. Because I think y'all shut things down a little bit before we shut things down. So it probably would have been late February because we didn't shut things down until mid-March. We were shut, we were beginning to shut things down in March. I think mm. my last days working were in the beginning of March. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I got, <laughs> I even I, remember the last movie you went to go see, I was, I was, but I, I'm watching plenty of stuff. Oh yeah. Stuff. You know I mean? I've heard if you get to the end of Netflix, that you get a TV deal to start another series. I hope so. <laughs> I'm, I'm halfway there. <laughs> I'm watching, I'm watching Rami now, which God, I really wish that I started it Rami. sooner. And I, yeah, Rami. It's a Hulu show. Okay. It's really great, like uh, coming of age kind of thing. Okay. But that's not coming of age. He's 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 like in his mid twenties, you know. Mm -hmm. But he's trying to figure out like what it is to be to identify in his religion, but also like to be the person that he wants to be. I don't know. It's really good, and Mahershala Ali is in it. It's great. Wow. And he's also an alumni of the studio that I studied at. So, okay. what studio did you study at? I went to the William Asper studio. Cool, cool. So. Is that okay? So, if 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 my my lovely little niece wants to be a real actress, she's in plays and stuff now. She's doing uh, the actress school, the acting school. She's looking for colleges that have uh, performing arts programs. If you were to tell, you know, a a somebody who is about to go into or, or going through the college programs or or looking to be a serious actress they're 16 17 18 years old they want to go they want to grow up and be a real actor a real actress um what would you tell them now uh assuming things get back to some form of relative normalcy uh, uh the improbability drive gets set back to zero and everything is uh, we achieve normalcy again sometime early next year what would you tell these young students that are that they they want to get into the industry and what I mean, where do they go from here? I would say stay in your budget. That is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. It's expensive to be an actor because you have to pay your bills while auditioning and doing all of those other things. So if you have student loans on top of that, Ooh, you're doing yeah. the wrong thing. Don't take out those loans. I have so, so many friends who are incredibly talented performers who have been held back because they have to work at a bar seven days a week in order to pay back their loans. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing. And the second thing is I would say um, if you're going to go to school for acting at college, um, prioritize a well-rounded education um, but my personal experience was like learning on the job, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I was lucky. I, I went to a two year conservatory in New York city. Mm -hmm. so a non degree college program. Like I didn't, I didn't get a college degree. Um, but it gave me so much more. It was really, really intense for two years. I didn't have debt at the end of it. And it gave me the opportunity to like meet and network in New York city all of that time. Mm -hmm. That was my journey. I have lots of friends who did college and then came later, but yeah, honestly, like, um, it's so easy to think that there's like a rush, but mm -hmm. you're not going to get a job until you have experience. So just experience things in your life yeah. and then and uh, the, you'll find your path. The way to get experience is to be able to do it and not have to, not have to work. 
that that urge to pay the bills and and the, those damn student loans. Uh, I mean, uh, student loans. That that that's uh, that's something I tell kids in general. Anytime I've gone to a yeah. career day, talking about, uh, you know, if you come out of if you come out of college with a four hundred dollar, five hundred dollars, thousand dollar a month note that you have to pay, you do not get to choose what you want to do. You have to get a job. Yep. Uh, it would be so nice to be able to just. I mean, if there's a job in Missouri or if there's a job in Louisiana or Indiana or wherever the hell you want to go and you could go there. But yeah. if you have a baseline of a thousand dollars a month, you have to get plus rent, plus food, plus car. Well, now all of a sudden your job prospects get limited because you can't go work in uh, 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 Missoula, Missouri, Missouri or some uh, uh, rural backwater and enjoy yourself and enjoy your life. You have to drive in traffic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have to go to an office to pay rent uh, on top of ugh, student loans and stuff. That sucks. Well, I mean, from my point of view, I'm seeing all these young people. I, I, I had this, the joy of living with three NYU students like mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. And um, they, are they're spending like sixty thousand dollars a year? Mm -hmm. You know, and I have. I'm so lucky to have been in this industry for so long that when I watch TV, I recognize a lot of the faces from my personal life. Like a lot of my friends are doing really well, <laughs> but none of them are doing well enough to be paying off sixty thousand dollars a year loans. Yeah, I can and imagine. so that's where I'm like, you gotta use your noggin there. You can't be doing that unless you have the privilege to do that. And that's, and, and and if you do, peace be with you. <laughs> right. If you can yeah, exactly. If you can afford it, I mean there's plenty yeah. of plenty of experiences that come out of college to to go do it if you can do it. Uh of but course. if it if you if you I, I really do think that if you plan on exiting college and working for a living uh, or, or just exiting college and wanting to do what you want to do. If you want to start your own business or if you want to be a performer or something like that, that I really do think that's some of the best advice that I've heard is just avoid. I mean, if you can avoid college, you can do that. You go to a conservancy or something like that, that you can, you can get that acting experience and, and, and progress from there. Because yeah. um, uh, one of the things that I learned way, way, way too late in college was uh, the people you meet, and the things that you've done are going to be the best uh, experience that you can get. Uh, way better than a textbook. Uh, <laughs> way, way better than a textbook. Because those people you meet are going to be able to lead to opportunities that you didn't even know existed. Yeah. And I'm sure that you've met plenty of people who went to fancy universities or whatever it is. But the, the thing is, unless you, unless you want to do the thing, it doesn't matter if it says you have you have Harvard on your, on your resume, if you don't actively pursue it, mm -hmm. so you could be in wherever you are in Missouri or Texas or anywhere. If you want to act, you will find a way to do it. Right. And getting involved locally is incredible. You get involved locally and then you connect with those people and then you just keep building from there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not going to come to you and ask you if you want to do it. Yeah. You've got to go to it and say, Hey, this is what I want to do when I grow up. Yeah. Uh, I was, I talked to a, geez, this was probably close to 20 years ago now. I talked to a guy named Terry Sanford, who was the, uh, he was the uh, chief something at the business that I was working at. Um, mm -hmm. And I asked him, you know, how do you, if I want to be where, where I'm at and get to where you are, what do I need to do? Well, what's the path? Because I had no idea. He's like, you just tell everybody what you want to be when you grow up. Just tell everybody all the time, constantly. Uh, and eventually I figured that out and I started telling people I just wanted to be a whiskey baron, the, the most famous whiskey baron in all of North America. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and one of these days it's going to have to come true because I don't shut up about it. Uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I tell my little niece, you want to be an actress? Tell everybody you're an actress. Don't tell everybody you want to be an actress. Tell them you are an actress. And they'll ask what you've been in and say, oh, you yeah. haven't seen that movie yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and also tell all of your relatives to stop asking your niece if they she's been in a movie that they've seen yet. <laughs> You're gonna in order to be in a movie that you've seen, you have to do a thousand movies that no one's seen. That's true too. My yeah. Goodness. The Japanese like commercials, the uh Yeah, it's true. <laughs> the Brazilian hazelnut commercials. Uh 
God, didn't didn't Arnold Schwarzenegger do a movie a uh, uh, commercial in Japan that was hilarious? I don't know. Arnold but Schwarzenegger was an actor before he was the governor of for you kids out there, Alyssa. I can't he believe was you an actor. That. <laughs> That's ridiculous. He's the Terminator. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be. He's not the Terminator anymore. They've made like three movies without him. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a series on Hulu right now that's a, yeah, a Terminator right? series. Isn't there female? Aren't there female leads? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this one is the this this series had I think Sarah Connor as the lead. I I, I just saw the I saw the thumbnail today. I didn't actually uh, jump into. I think it's a series. Uh, Terminator oh. Final Days. It's like a liquid Terminator. I was like, this looks good. <laughs> awesome. A liquid, a liquid robot. Sounds cool, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the graphics are going to be awesome. Of um, one of my favorite movies, Big Hero Six. Oh, that is my favorite. Absolutely, is one of my favorite incredible? movies. Yeah, it's fantastic. I was, I was very, 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 very pleased when I, we finally watched Big Hero Six, and I realized I didn't have to watch the first five to be caught up to speed with what was going on in this particular episode. <laughs> That's. <laughs> That joke is brought to you by the 1990s. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but yeah, that's a that's a that's another really good one. Uh, another really good movie. We wa- in fact, we watched that probably about a month ago. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to say about a month ago because yeah, it's on the Disney Plus. The, the, that that's our yeah, entire yeah. life right now. Is is we our lifeblood is through movies on. That's- in fact, that's that was one of the one of our movie days was when we watched Velocipat. We watched Velocipaster. We watched uh, evil giant evil aliens from outer space or something like that, and uh, you know Space it. Captain, Captain of Space. That was a triple feature that day, and two of those movies were good. The third movie was not. Um, oh. Yeah, and uh, but Space Captain from Outer Space was a was a a remarkably charming movie, fun to watch. Uh, Velocipaster is the movie that kicked off that day, and we do not talk about the third one. <laughs> it was well, an honor to have been included in this, this lineup, <laughs> and and only one of those movies has been watched twice since then. Um, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 been. I mean, it's a great way, uh, a great source of entertainment. We've gone through all of the Futuramas. We've gone. My kids have watched every Simpsons ever. Uh, that tells you wow. how long the uh, quarantine pandemic has been going on. Yeah, pandemic quarantine. A quarantine pandemic would be, would be worse than a pandemic. Uh, anyway, um, uh, what else have we done? We the entire Marvel series. Uh, oh, from Iron Man to Spider Man, uh, far from. But the movie, home. not the Netflix series. No, no, not the Netflix series. The like I'm a the, big fan of the Netflix all of the series. movies. Got it. Yeah. I like movies. I, I do consider myself um, more of a Marvel girl than a DC. I'm not into the DC yeah, movies. Yeah, it's, it's tough getting into the DC movies. Uh, yeah. I watched a really good analysis on the difference between Justice League and the Avengers and why one movie worked and one movie didn't. Uh, mm. and, and when you watch, and, and it all boiled down to, in the Avengers, uh, everything was breaking down. That one scene in the helicarrier where uh, uh, they're at each other's throats, they discover the weapons, uh, Banner grabs the staff, and they're all about to just all fall apart, and that's when Hawkeye blows up the engine, and everything's about to go to shit, and they all come together, right? That's the, that's the scene, the central scene. Uh, yeah. Justice League never had a scene like that. The closest they came was when they were debating whether or not to raise uh, Superman from the dead, or from... Yeah, raise, resurrect Superman. So is this like, like individualism versus collectivism? Is that what we're talking Something about? Something like that. But there was no, there was no. I mean, there was a genuine. The, according when I was watching this analysis, they were their their argument was that there was a genuine risk, a, a apparent risk in the Avengers that everything was going to fall apart and they wouldn't come together and they still might not make it because they just weren't quite there yet. Uh, Got it. Versus in the Justice League, where they were just like a little bit uncertain, a little bit uncertain, and they're like, "Okay, I'm opposed to it. I'm opposed to it. I'm in for it, or I'm in favor. I'm in favor." And then they just did it, and then there was no consequence. 
Is just, the and, in fact, high. and they had I, just won the fight they they had come from. They just weren't certain of themselves. And that was got it. Yeah. So it was uh, like yeah, those are in high stakes. I understand right. that. And when I watched the Justice League, I was just looking at like this is there's there's no emotional hook to it. There's no there's no there there doesn't seem to be any kind of uh uh, danger that anything is that in, it, it's a foretold conclusion. They're, they're going to win this thing. It's obvious. Of course, yeah. in the Avengers, you know, they're going to win it too. Uh, Cause yeah. they had 47 more movies to make or however many they made. <laughs> yeah. But in the justice league, there just didn't seem to be that, that tension. Um, I've never seen the justice league, so I can't speak on it, but I can, I can just, I, I'm assuming that it's not going to be my thing just because I'm not like a DC yeah. vibe. But I really liked the um, the Netflix Marvel series mm-hmm. because they're definitely a little bit more like down and dirty, and the stakes are always pretty high because it was more it was based on the individual characters' journey and a mm-hmm. lot of their origin stories. I haven't watched Iron Fist, but I heard that one was crap. That was um, tough. Yeah, that was hard to watch. <laughs> <laughs> but I watched most of the other ones. Yeah, and I watched I watched several of those, not even realizing that it, that they were interconnected at first uh oh interesting yeah i was watching i was watching because this one just looked interesting uh just to get together what was the one with the 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 there was the one with the dude uh luke cage cage i love luke cage and i love then, the Punisher. and then the chick um i can't remember june jane no uh that's not right it was the actress from don't trust the bee in unit 23 Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Yeah, I watched Jessica Jones. Uh, I was watching that one, watching Luke Cage. And then when, like, Luke Cage showed up in Jessica Jones, I was like, wait a minute. Like, (laughs) these are connected. They're not consistent, I think, within the TV show Mm -hmm. and within the comics for a second. You thought that they were going to be, but then they ended up not being. But, yeah, anyway. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, because I, I ended up, I got distracted from something else. I think I started watching Iron Fist, and then I got I got disinterested, and then I got distracted with something else, and I quit watching them. Did you watch The Punisher, though? I did not. I have not. I, I recommend. I probably ought I like to. It a lot. Well, there you go. Personally. <laughs> so that's a personal endorsement of The Punisher series. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Uh, who is the Who's the main actor in The Punisher series? Bernthal. Okay. Bernthal. What's his first name? I don't know. Dave? Something Bernthal. Mike? Eddie? He's, he's, uh, I don't know. I like him, though. Okay. I, I Let's do get... a podcast and we're talking about how he studied in Russia. Okay. I thought that was interesting. Okay, cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of yeah. getting a sense that you like the, the artistry and writing of the series over just the Punisher actor himself or no, 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 no. I do absolutely like have a crush on him. I okay. can't remember his first name. That That's is fair. part of it. Absolutely. But I am terrible at names. Oh yeah. Me too. But uh, yeah. No, I don't see, remember. see, I went that way intentionally because it sounded like you kind of had a crush on the actor a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Of course I had a crush on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm not going to lie. That's why I started watching Jessica Jones. And yeah. Well, cute. I mean, uh, she's cute, but she's like, uh, I don't feel like she's a good Jessica Jones. I think Jessica Jones is more of a mess. This girl is a little bit, she's also not very good at fight choreo. Like, Gotcha. Can you hear my dog? Fight choreo. Can you hear my dog in the background? No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, somebody must have walked down the street or something because he's running around. There he is. Oh, I heard him now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Little Coon has been sleeping this whole time. Maybe I'll go bring him later. <laughs> and he's right there. I could see him through my door. Oh, <sighs> Dumb dog. Man. Yeah, somebody's out there giving him a bother, and he is letting everybody <laughs> be known. Either that or he's barking at our bird. I'm not sure which. But he's here. I can see him there, so he's not. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you, you've told us about your perfect New York day. Uh, you know, walking to the park, catching indie movies, all the stuff. Uh, what is the perfect, and like after the movie, what's the perfect night? What's the perfect evening? What do you do after that? Uh, well, I don't know. It might have changed at this 
Assuming right. that walking outside doesn't kill you. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Walking outside does not kill you. And I guess I just like wandering around. Some of the best nights I've had in New York City is, oh, my internet connection. Some of my best nights were when I would just kind of like catch a margarita in a random bar and then just start talking to strangers. Mm -hmm. um, New you know, York that's is, a, is, a, is a neat place like that where everything's densely yeah. packed and you can just kind of walk out there and kind of throw a, throw a rock and find a place and go have a drink there and the random comedy show, the random yeah. band, the random whatever, run into Jerry Seinfeld at a coffee shop or whatever. I don't know what happened to New York. It's been... <laughs> It's been 20 it's years true. since I've been there. Oh, yeah. When you, Tom's, Tom's. It's overpriced. It's the Seinfeld, <laughs> but it's just the exterior. It's not the interior, and it's absolutely overpriced. There's another There's another place that's a couple blocks away that's a, de definitely a more authentic diner experience. Screw Tom's. No, oh, yeah, of course. Screw I don't stand. I don't think I've ever, I, I don't think I ever actually went there. Uh, we went there for a David Letterman show when I was in college, uh, mid-90s. They, David Letterman did his shows that featured the various big cities because he was trying to bump ratings. Uh, ours was Houston. He did Chicago. He did L.A. Uh, he did a handful of others. We went there for the Houston show. Uh, Buzz, Alt no, Neil Armstrong was the one of the guests. Lyle Lovett was a musical guest. Uh, it was a really cool show. We met Muji Bar and uh, uh, both the deli guys, Muji Bar and the other guy whose name I can't remember, uh, met Biff or Griff. God dang, it's been 25 years. Uh, stayed in a really nice hotel across the street, caught the show at the the, uh, 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 the theater. The Oh, man, the name of the theater is even evading me. Jeez, anyway, it was, it was a really fun time. And then we went and took a tour of the city, uh, caught one of those double-decker bus tours, uh, went to Battery Park, looked at, the uh, Statue of Liberty there in the bay uh, and mm -hmm. over off to the side where there was, I guess, Staten Island or whatever that little island is off to the side. Uh, yeah. my, my girlfriend at the time pointed to it and said, is that Alcatraz? Yeah. And we had a good oh, laugh. No, it's not <laughs> even the right side of the country. I know, right? We had a great laugh about it. Uh, I still, oh, my God. I still pick on her about it today. Island was there. Maybe that's what you guys were looking at. And yeah, there's was, Staten Island. And well, if you ever come back, it, it was like a little island off to the side of the, uh, you know, Ellis Island where the statue is. And then like off to the side, there was another little island. I didn't think it was like the Staten Island. Staten Island's huge. Long Island's huge. It's easy Staten to spot those. Staten Island's huge. So it, Ellis Island is one island and it's separate from the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, there, that's so the one. Ellis Island is like the buildings and there's like lots of like old suitcases and all the history of like the immigration there. And then the Statue of Liberty is pretty much just that. Right. And I, I don't think it's worth going to physically going to the Statue of Liberty. And a New Yorker would say, don't even pay to do a boat. The Staten Island Ferry is free. Of course. So you wait for the Staten Island Ferry and you cross and you get a beautiful view. You can buy booze on the boat, and then you go back. That's it, free, three ninety nine. Amazing. Yeah. See, we had we had all of an hour and a half to spend to do the little tour, so we we took the hour long tour, and and then uh, the flight home we missed our airport. That was awesome. It was a charter flight. It was supposed to land at Intercontinental Airport, which is just several minutes away from where I live. Uh, but we missed that airport. Then we missed the other airport, which is Hobby on the other side of town, and we ended up having to land at Ellington Field, which is like if you picture Houston, like here, this is like the big blob. Uh, Intercontinental Airport's like here. Elling, Ellison, Ellington Field is way down here. Uh, and it's about an hour and a half, two hours away. Uh, and we had to. Th that's where the NASA training, uh, the, the training jets for NASA and the uh, wow. Coast Guard is based at that that airfield. So we had to sit there and we couldn't get off the plane because there's no terminal. Uh, the plane had to refuel so we could fly across town back to the airport that we were supposed to be at. That was a, that was a, a hell of a fun adventure for pilots that didn't know where to land in the city wow. of Houston. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, and and it's not that hard. The like the what is it? The third largest airport in the world. It's easy to find. It's I mean you can spot it uh, from space, I guess. <laughs> wow. But this this 
particular pilot missed it. So there you go. I've been in Houston once. Is Houston the city? Do you guys have that like? Is there a hotel and then there's like a large thing with like a restaurant that spins on the top of it? Is that in Houston? That is. We are. We do have that. Yes, we have one of those in downtown. I that um, hotel. Yeah, there's a hotel in downtown. It's a Hilton that has the uh, uh, restaurant at the top that spins. I think it's the. Uh, the, I think it's called the Wildcatter Restaurant or the Oilman's Restaurant or something like that. It's an oil, oil themed name, uh, oh. at, the, at the top of the hotel. It's, yeah. like, a, it's like a hoity-toity restaurant. It's kind of a bougie spot. It, it, it gives that impression. <laughs> but it's it's a revolving restaurant. It's a revolving restaurant on top of a Hilton. That's what it is. Yeah, um, that's what it is. Yeah, I've never eaten there. I think it's a. Uh, I think it. I think it might be kind of a touristy place. So. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I should probably take my wife there sometime. You're supposed to go to you're supposed to go to barbecue. If you go to if you go to Houston, you're supposed to go to barbecue, right? You can get barbecue pretty much Just everywhere. That's not yeah, in barbecue. the South. That's I'm gonna go get barbecue. Yeah, that's barbecue, like, Tex Mex. Uh you see, Houston is a big international city. It's, I mean, it's like you know, New York. We got people here from everywhere. Uh more yeah. so than places like Dallas or San Antonio. Uh where we have, you know, being the energy capital of the state. We have people here from uh, all over the Pacific Rim area, uh, 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 all of Northern Europe, where they have BP and uh, uh, all the oil fields up there. Uh, Nigeria is a big, uh, the, the west coast of Africa, there's a big uh, population of folks here that are from that area. And of course, all over the United States, we have people here. So you can get good Vietnamese food, you can get really good Indian food, you can get really good Japanese food, Chinese food. We have, I mean, the, the restaurant culture in Houston is just nuts. You can literally eat all over the world in a week. That's amazing. It, that's, but no, but that's, in the before time, at least you could. I don't know about now. <laughs> sure, of course. I understand. Like, it's so it's interesting <clears throat> traveling and then seeing what places have what food, like, mm-hmm. on the forget I went to a wedding in Green Bay and I stopped in um Milwaukee Mm -hmm. and we were looking for random restaurants and somehow we ended up on Groupon and went to this Ethiopian restaurant in Milwaukee and it was the best Ethiopian food I have ever had and I've been to all of the restaurants in New York (laughs) for some this is for some reason like my specific niche of like food that I like, okay. um, but I would have never expected in Milwaukee. And so there was, I found out that there was a large Ethiopian population in Milwaukee, but Go figure. I'm, I'm an East coast girl. I grew up in the East coast the, mm-hmm. my whole life. So I don't know much about the middle of the United States. And right, so right. it's been amazing to explore it through food. Yeah. And that's one of the fast, that's one of the things we like to do when we travel, uh, me and my lovely wife do road trips. That's our that's our preferred family vacation mode. In fact, we were on a road trip when the apocalypse started. Uh, we we had gone out to the Grand Canyon to visit an aunt and uncle. So we had taken a, a, a week long to get out to Flagstaff, a week long trip to get out to Flagstaff. And then we were taking uh, four days to get back, give or take. Um, yeah, that's about right. Three days out, four days back. That's pretty much how we were rolling. And we extended it out a couple of days because everything was shutting down as we were heading home. Uh, all hell was breaking loose here. Uh, you know, nothing was on the shelves. All the toilet paper had been bought. And we we're in Albuquerque. So we decided to stop at a grocery store and spend the night. We spent the night in Amarillo on the way home. First time I've ever spent the night in Amarillo, as a matter of fact. Um, <laughs> it's an interesting and, place. I mean, it, it was Amarillo. All I remember it. about that place is the bad coffee. Yeah. <laughs> We stayed at a KOA, so I, I was able to make my own coffee. It was uh, <laughs> it was worth the extra effort to do the KOA. Uh, but it was when we go these places, uh, when we when we do our travel, we prefer to avoid the Wendy's and Burger Kings and uh, uh, quick food joints that you can find. We we try to avoid the uh, uh, Chili's. Pretty much the only chain that will hit is a Cracker Barrel on the way out. That's our that's yes. our tradition. Uh, on the day, we, on the day we leave, we grab Cracker Barrel. That's it. And then, I love Cracker Barrel. I am disappointed. On my way home from Arizona, we drove across the country, mm-hmm. and I think we stopped at a Cracker Barrel, like our, our one of our last stops, and it was terrible. It was the worst Cracker Barrel I've ever been to. 
But for the most part, usually I love going to Cracker Barrel. Crack, Cracker Barrel. Yeah, say that Barrel. six times. Quick, go. I'm not even drinking. I'm drinking tea and I can't say it. <laughs> um, um, but I love Cracker Barrel, specifically their pancakes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because Man, we, you're I, not out here. You have to drive like two hours. You don't have direction. Cracker Barrel's in New York City? No. Well, I guess not. I think, you know what they started doing? They started doing a Thanksgiving pop-up of Ooh. Cracker Barrel in New York Ooh. City, which is ridiculous and hilarious. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. There's no Cracker Barrels here. That's interesting. I guess I guess you kind of do have to get out of the city if, if for for a place where you have to be densely packed, a Cracker Barrel is not ideally uh, suited for something like that. That Especially if it's like that little hut thing. God, that would cost them millions of dollars to put that in the middle of New York. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Very good point. Okay, well, um, I, I could sit here and talk to you for another like 45 minutes to an hour or whatever, but we are at the end of our hour. It has been a happy hour. Uh, it has been. I'm relaxed. I've had a couple of drinks. Uh, I hope you've had a good time. I have too. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the whiskey. You're very welcome. I'm going to enjoy some, probably neat, or maybe I'll make one of my old-fashioned cocktails, but not until after my audition. Well, I can tell you this. Go to our channel, Old Humble Distilling, uh, Old Humble Distilling Company on YouTube. Go to okay. the first episode of the Cocktail Corner. There is okay. a pumpkin spice old-fashioned. Wow. It is better, than you, it's better than you think it is. I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to judge was, it. I was expecting it to be, you know, I've never really had been a big fan of pumpkins. I'm not a big fan of pumpkin spice lattes and all that crap, the the, the yeah, yeah. silly oh, little yeah. basic uh, coffees and whatnot. But mm -hmm. I saw this recipe. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. It's beginning of October. I'm going to try it. It's a great first cocktail to do. It is really surprisingly good. It's a nice, uh, I mean, it's ginger and cinnamon and... Uh, I don't remember what the other one is. The the recipe's on there, but uh, sounds good. I mean, you got it, me. It takes a, it takes a little prep time because you got to make the simple syrup that goes into this the spice. Uh, but you know, in a couple of weeks, do it. It's really good. Surprisingly uh, good. good. Actually, yeah, I have some ginger, so maybe I'll yeah whip uh, that up one of these days. What was it? Ginger, uh, ground ginger, uh, cinnamon, and the other one. It was ground. Uh, uh, I'd have to look it up. I can't even remember. Uh, I, I made the simple syrup and it's sitting in my refrigerator. So, uh, you know, and of course, I, but I use brown sugar instead of white sugar to make the simple syrup. Uh, Always. And that, Always. Gave it, that gave it a little bit more, little, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of that fall flavor. flavor. Yeah. Yeah. That was, it was yeah, yeah. I'm, I will always, if I get an opportunity, I will use it with the brown sugar. Not like, not like brown sugar, like that you would bake with. Mm -hmm. I would use them or like the, like the brown, like sugar in the raw type sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would use that. Yeah, either either one of them, either the brown raw sugar or the brown baking sugar, the, the molassesy type of stuff. That that worked perfectly fine in the simple syrup, and I was I was yeah. quite pleased with how it turned out. Um, another another really good old fashioned that I picked up on that first trip or that last trip out before the apocalypse started was the Grand Canyon old fashioned, which was uh, a pomegranate simple syrup for the old fashioned. For the simple syrup okay. with the old fashioned. You mean like you mean you mean grenadine? Basically grenadine, but you can. Uh, it was like rosemary and grenadine uh, to make the simple syrup, and a dash of uh, a dash of grenadine instead of plain old simple syrup to make the old fashioned. And it was, it was really. It, it just has this light, soft, uh, fruity flavor to it. And it tasted really, really, really good. That's probably that going to be, good. if not the next episode of the Cocktail Corner, the episode after that. So it'll be before or five. I'll follow up on that because I actually have pomegranate syrup and rosemary in well, my fridge. So that might be my choice. Because I go. have pomegranate syrup, but like the one that you get from the um, the Indian store, like the okay. where they sell Indian spices and stuff like that. Sure, and, yeah. Um, it's, so it's not that sweet. It's a lot more like tangy and sour. So you have sugar to it. Okay. Use it, but it's fucking delicious. Excuse me. I don't know if we're allowed to. I. I, I, I don't give a shit. Nobody's time. watching. It doesn't fucking matter. We can say whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the FCC oh. can eat my butt. <laughs>
Who knows? <laughs> but it's been a pleasure talking with you. And I'll definitely follow up and let you know how my um, pomegranate rosemary cocktail turns out. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, that's all we got for us. Uh, you can find us, of course, at spec stores across the state of Texas. And hopefully... Uh, very soon at uh, liquor stores up and down Broadway in New York City. Uh, Alyssa, say goodnight to everybody. Good night, everybody. It's been a pleasure. It has indeed. And I am now going to cut to our closing. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Catch that playlist over there, that video over there. And here's a recommended video for you down here. Um, and don't forget, uh, hit us up on the social medias. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.